While stunting is a complex problem, nutrition interventions alone can't prevent it. The concept of nutrition-sensitive development has recently gained currency in global advocacy by the Scaling Up Nutrition movement aimed at reducing malnutrition. The 2013 Lancet series on maternal and child nutrition also details a framework of actions that include both nutrition-specific and nutrition-sensitive interventions in an effort to mobilize political leadership to ensure the success of programs. Evidence for the role of contextual factors is relatively limited when you compare individual and household level determinants of stunting. The contextual domain related with political and economic factors cuts across many of the close causal factors of stunted growth and development. Government and other structures that can influence economic policies, markets and services play a major role with regard to food insecurity and undernutrition in populations. The bi-directional pathway between poverty and undernutrition, surrounded by a web of contextual factors, is well known. Disparities in stunting prevalence by wealth strata reflect this relationship. Evidence linking poverty alleviation interventions to nutrition outcomes is still limited. Social protection programs such as cash transfers have demonstrated a positive impact on poverty reduction, but their effects on linear growth have been minimal. Employment and livelihoods, access to financial services and income and wealth are other factors that enable household access to higher quality foods, health care and the direct cause of growth and development. International regulatory policies, along with the code of marketing of breast milk substitutes and food safety regulations in compliance with Codex Alimentarius, are important regulatory instruments. In May 2012, the World Health Organization member states requested guidance on complementary foods for the following topics. How to ensure nutritionally adequate diets for children in food insecure populations. How to avoid displacing breast milk and locally available nutritious foods by commercial products. And how to protect children from wrong feeding practices that could increase risk of obesity. The healthcare system, that is doctors, nurses and health workers, are responsible for screening and identification of a child's inadequate growth and development. In many countries, community-based maternal and child health clinics, child health days and lay community health workers represent the most common means to deliver nutrition-specific interventions. In overburdened health systems, too little time is spent on nutrition counselling. For many countries, assessment of stunting remains a challenge due to lack of skills and time to assess linear growth and link it to counselling. On top of that, the general health status of caregivers influences their capacity to care for young children, which can constrain their ability to follow feeding recommendations. Caregiver education is an important predictor of child health and nutritional outcomes. Improved female education was responsible for an estimated 43% reduction in undernutrition between the 1970s and 90s. Accomplishing higher education can improve caregivers' ability to understand and respond to nutrition behaviour changes. Interventions have been associated with reductions in stunting and improved linear growth in a number of trials that focused on improving caregiver knowledge about complementary feeding. In food-secure settings, enhanced nutritional knowledge and feeding skills can improve complementary feeding practices. Large impacts on height for age have been reported in Peru and China with nutrition education interventions alone. The opposite, in turn, can contribute to continued poor child growth. Cultural beliefs also influence food choices and behaviours. Repeated exposure to a variety of foods facilitates acceptance and establishes food preferences. Deeply held beliefs can also impact a child's health when they pertain to types of foods or preparation methods, when and what types of foods should be introduced, who can and should feed young children, how to feed children when they are sick, how to feed a child who does not want to eat, or how food will impact a baby's sleep patterns. How these beliefs affect feeding is heavily influenced by the individuals who surround the primary caregiver, the person's educational level and social status. 
Because women are usually the primary caregivers, female empowerment may be an important contextual factor underlying healthy child growth and development. Men also contribute to decision-making through their control over household finances and food purchases, but also through their active support to, for example, mothers breastfeeding. While promoting a varied diet in infancy is likely to establish lifelong healthier eating patterns, caregivers in resource-constrained settings may worry that providing higher-cost foods, such as meat or eggs, to young children may lead them to develop unrealistic food preferences that cannot be sustained. Interventions to improve complementary feeding practices needs to be designed with these cultural considerations in mind. Agriculture encompasses food and cash crop cultivation and livestock production. It interacts with other contextual conditions, such as the environment and political economy, to drive food availability and access. Some suggestions for positive child growth outcomes of agricultural programs include explicit nutrition objectives, behaviour change communication strategies and access by women to credit and extension services, trends towards monocropping and heavy dependency on grains, seeds, pesticides may be contributing to a lack of dietary diversity and consequent micronutrient deficiencies and environmental destruction. Another promising area of agriculture with high potential for impact on young child growth and development is small livestock development. Milk and eggs are nutrient-rich complementary foods and poorer households in both rural and urban areas can feasibly raise poultry or goats. Environmental determinants of infection, inflammation and undernutrition are important underlying factors contributing to unhealthy growth and development. Contaminated water and poor sanitation are estimated to cause 5.4 billion cases of diarrhoea and 1.6 million deaths each year. Environmental contamination, such as filth on floors, are particularly important to young children exploring their environments through crawling, early walking and by putting objects in their mouths. The proper disposal of faeces, removal of animal waste and hand hygiene are critical during this sensitive age period. The provision of toilets, improvements in hand washing practices and improvements in water quality are important tools to prevent intestinal diseases and thereby reduce the risk of stunting. Recent cross-country comparisons of demographic and health survey data suggest open defecation accounts for a large proportion of the gradient in child height, even after accounting for socio-economic and other potentially confounding differences. Insufficient access to safe water is an obvious obstacle to hygienic practices and the safe preparation of complementary food. Other important contextual factors such as population density, degree of urbanization and climate change may also contribute to worsening rates of malnutrition. Complementary feeding is one of the central pillars supporting healthy growth and development. Stunting and its consequences arise from a complex array of causal and contextual factors. Research, programs and policies need to be informed by a careful assessment of the contextual determinants of stunting in order to design comprehensive transdisciplinary and multifaceted approaches to promote healthy growth and development. Today there is tremendous momentum to refocus investment in programs and research on improving maternal and child nutrition during the first thousand days of life. This conceptual framework can help guide policy and program planning and evaluation of infant and young child feeding to keep future generations growing strong.